toys dude hello everybody yes we're gonna open toys we're gonna talk about toys hello pandar thank you so much for the subscription how's everybody doing today hello rabid wombat hello bash all right so we're gonna talk about stuff and i'm going to work on this it's a few years old, <laughs> like most of the things that I play with. So this is from... So McFarland Toys decided they were going to get into the brick building game a few years ago. They did Walking Dead. They did Game of Thrones. did a couple other licenses. Some stuff they were already working with. Um... Not quite as good as Legos, not quite as bad as Best Lock. So it's somewhere in between. Um, a lot of them kind of looked like this, where it's just a lot of like a lot of floor you got to build and walls. Um, I actually I have another I have another Walking Dead set that I attempted to build, and then I just gave up. It just wasn't that. It wasn't it wasn't that fun, and it just wasn't that interesting. <laughs> Cause it's like just, just walls and floors and, and then you get some interesting characters sometimes, but whatever. But this one, I'm definitely excited for the light up fish tank head, head fish tanks. So, so let's check that out. And as I'm doing that, we can chat about toy stuff. So yeah, if you're on Jessica's discord in the Dune room, we were got to talking about some stuff that I thought would be good conversation here. So I'm gonna open this up. This is from, like I said, this is a, this is a few years old already. Just looking for a date, but I don't see one. Oh well, don't matter. Oh, there's more tape. I'll always get you with the tape. All right. Look at, look at how fancy this is. We got a booklet, a base plate, bags of stuff. Penny. Penny, right? Yeah, it's funny you say that, Rabbit Wombat. I, neither I nor my wife, we have not watched Walking Dead in years. I hear it's better now than it was. I don't know. This is kind of cool. These are the heads. And then, accessory bits, fish tanks. Yeah, so let's bring up as I sort. So we started talking about. Uh, let's see where should I put this transition. All right. So yes, yesterday, the day before, McFarland Toys revealed this image. Now, what can we learn here? Well, first of all, what we're looking at here are prototypes. Now, what is a prototype when it comes to toys? Well, put simply, these are handmade. These basically they're handmade. That's that's the thing. Uh, they're either hand sculpted or uh, 3D printed from a from a uh, 3D sculpt, and then they are hand painted by and again the the sculpting and the painting by some of like the best artists in the world. Now. They could. They might also involve um, facial scanning techniques and three uh, D printing of that kind of thing. It just depends on who is making the toy and and for what. Now, will the final product look exactly like these? Uh, it might be close, but it's the final product will look different from what we're seeing here in some ways. It's it's inevitable. Oh, thank you so much, Arsenal Roy 2K. Five months. Wow. Five months. Crazy. 
Um, yeah. Now, as somebody was asking, why are we seeing this solicit right now when the movie is months away at least? And who knows how it's going to be released and all of that kind of stuff. What is... Okay, so I have a bunch of bags, but they're not labeled. Right, but I need this one. And yeah, so what, what I talked about is... Actually, let me make this a little bit smaller so I can get it out of the way. Ooh, mini picture. There we go. So toys are great. I love toys, obviously. Even today... Toys that you want to make a whole bunch of, toys take a really long time to make. Food, oh my goodness. Food always takes precedence. Enjoy. Hopefully you're getting something good. Toys take a long time to make. In fact, most toys that have any, any sizable run take about a year to produce. Now, that that's not... Like I said, most. That's not always the case. But typically, toy production is about a year-long process. So what does that mean when we're talking about something for movies or TV shows or things like that? Well, first of all, the media companies behind these things have to be very careful in thinking about when the toys need to come out. So we get things like these dune figures where we're seeing them now months before they come out seemingly months before the movie comes out who knows but again these toys were planned last year before coronavirus <laughs> before any of these any of these things were going on so they were they've already been in production for a long time now coronavirus and stuff that that's going to screw with anything that happens in China is going to screw with toy producing. And part of the actual part of the reason why toy producing is a year long process is because Chinese New Year in China essentially shuts down factories for almost a month. So without that toy production would actually be less time. It would be almost 11 months rather than 12 months. Um yeah, Arsenal Roy 2K, uh, Toy Fair Magazine, yes, and Zenblade, 100%. So the thing is, because these toys are in production for so long a period, very often there will be spoilers for things if it's toys that are related to a movie or a TV show or something. Uh, that's been going on for a long time. So toy companies have to balance, all right, do we want the toys to come out at the time a show or whatever is released or sorry, I'm trying to figure out where this little piece goes or do we want to make sure we keep the secrets and have the toys come out a little bit later and hey Kane and a great example of this and how it works is this guy so if you remember late last year, or mid last year, I guess, Mandalorian came out. Instant hit. Whatever your thoughts on it might be, or your thoughts on the uh, people involved in it. But there was this little fella. Uh, and so I'm, I'm sorry, spoilers if you haven't seen Mandalorian, but by now, at least you all know who this character is. So immediately people saw this this guy and thought, oh my God, this is the cutest thing ever. How do I get toys? And then it was right before the holiday season. Oh my God, where do I get toys? And lo and behold, there were no toys. Uh, yeah, the trailer for season two just came out this morning. Yes. But again, what happened was the executives at Lucasfilm slash Disney, everything else, made a very very conscious decision. What's going on here with this guy?
essentially giving up having toys available for the holiday season last year in order to keep the secret. Yeah, sorry, I know I'm gonna <laughs> I'm piling up overlays of images. Pro streamer here. I, all right, I'm gonna get rid of Baby Yoda. As cute as he is, uh, remove. So yeah, because something like Baby Yoda, so iconic of an image, so cute, 100% would have been spoiled by reports coming out of China. Somebody would have seen it. Somebody from the factory would have posted a picture. It would have been out in the world. And it would have ruined the surprise for a lot of people. <laughs> so I, I, I found it quite humorous last year when there were all of these articles and things about how, oh, Disney dropped, Disney dropped the ball on, on having baby Yoda things out for, you know, for the holiday season and everything like that. And it's like, mm, no, no, that was, uh, that was 100% planned and necessary for their, for their marketing. Uh, I am building the walking dead governor's room. Complete with light up severed head fish tanks. Right. Now, another good point is because sometimes toy companies will make toys specifically to come out at launch or before launch to use as, as uh, promo products. Now, this can cause troubles too. Because, again, remember how early toys have to go into production, right? A year before, for the sake of argument, let's just say a year before they come out, right? Now, do things change? Yes, they do. So sometimes, where's, I'm missing a piece that should have been in this bag. That's always Lego is so good about that these days when they keep all the parts in bags so you don't have only what you need. Oh, this this set is going to get really boring really quickly. I mean like there's just bags of just floors and walls. Oh, well. Um where is the back to this silly chair? Mhm. Mm Am I missing a piece? Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, so toy companies will plan on toys coming out at the time of release or launch or whatever. So like these Dune toys, they'll be available. And as I think was it, uh, Arsenal Roy, was it you who said, you know, where, where's the Zendaya figure? So yeah, there obviously this does not include the full cast of the movie, all the main characters that we know of. Although again, we don't know how how uh, you know exactly how it's going to be at least for this first movie, because in theory there's going to be another one after it. We'll see. But um, who knows? Again, a year ago what they were planning on for reveals leading up to the movie, what they were going to think about, uh, like who was going to be in what trailers. They would have had no idea. A year, well, they might have had some idea a year ago, but maybe, you know, certain characters they weren't going to reveal until much closer to the movie came out. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I believe that is Rebecca Fer Ferguson. I think that's Jessica. I can, I can make the, this image bigger for a moment. Yeah, that's that's mama. Um, yeah, so with a toy line like this, because obviously we're getting multiple, you know, we're getting multiple characters. Some some toy lines for a movie, it'll essentially just be the hero and the villain, and they'll be they'll say that's enough. We don't need any more than that. But here we're going fairly 
fairly deep already. And he, although <laughs> it's a, a tangent, but like why there are Duncan action figures and why Duncan is so prominent in the in the trailer, it's like, hmm, well, maybe maybe Duncan is going to play a bigger part in this movie than he did in the original book. Uh, if you've been following along our Dune reading, when we read Dune months ago, uh, you'll know what I mean about that. Spoilers. But, um, but yes, I fully imagine that if they're going to make all of these characters, I, I've got to imagine they have additional figures in the works. Probably in the early stages, like sculpts are done, uh, paint applications have been figured out, but they're holding off on green lighting the production in China until the movie actually comes out. So again, these toys will be available at launch. Yeah, exactly, a second wave. Uh, so these will be available at launch, and then they'll have plans ready for a second wave, but they'll wait to see if the movie is a success before actually putting a ton of money into it. Because as I've talked about, toys, not only do they take a long time to make, but they're actually still really expensive to make. To make a mold for a toy, for a, an action figure, anything that has multiple parts, but not a million parts and not too big. So anything that's like a six inch figure, thereabouts, uh, Again, that has multiple pieces to it, so multiple points of articulation. Uh, to make the mold for that toy, and a mold is a metal, is a two-part metal contraption that's very heavy. Molds are massive. And to make a mold costs it, tens of thousands of dollars. And that's for one mold of one character. And so obviously if you have multiple things, you need multiple molds. So it's it's expensive to make toys. And that's that's just to make the mold itself. Uh, it's, a, it's an expensive, time-consuming process. All right, we have, we have the governor with his chair. Oh, there we go. With his drink. It's fine. Okay. Hey, look. Now we get to build fish tanks. Uh, interesting. So this is kind of cute. Oh, let me get rid of... Or let me move it. So I don't know how many of you are actually familiar with McFarlane Toys or Todd McFarlane. Uh, he's not... He's a, he's a different kind of name brand than he used to be. If you're not familiar... <laughs> Panda, I like your comment about the mold. Oh, mold on food is so tragic. Uh, briefly, if you're not familiar with Todd McFarlane, he made a name for himself as a comic book artist. He did a run on Spider-Man that's hugely popular, uh, very, very well known, uh, did a bunch of other stuff. And then he wrote and drew his own comics, very famous for Spawn and other things. Uh, and then when he was doing that stuff, he decided, hey, these I see all these other, you know, I see all these toy companies making things for action, you know, action figures for comic book characters. Why don't I just do it myself and did and became very successful at it. And so his toy company has been around for a long time, made action figures for his own stuff and then a bunch of other things. And um, yeah, very, very popular. And he's a he's a very interesting, fun guy. I've gotten to talk to him a few times. But so here, in, even in these directions, there are Todd's tips on things. <laughs> yeah, mucous, exact. So yeah, the mold is very expensive, and all the all the steps leading up to the mold are very expensive. But once you have it, running the running the plastic through it, yeah, is relatively inexpensive as as part of the process. And yes, that's the, and another good point is that you make one mold and you can run a ton of plastic through it, but eventually molds wear and break down or they actually physically break the the heat and the 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 wear and tear on it even though they are made of metal. So you have to make another mold and that's another 
you know, $30,000. There's some really cool pictures online of molds in, in, uh, toy factories in China. And like, it's just these, these metal, um, they look like, they look like big sandwiches because they're just, they're two part metal molds. And again, they're injection. Most toys are made from injection molding. So that means they're, it's like a sprue. So it's kind of like a sprue for models. So it looks like that. And the plastic gets squirted in from the side and it runs through all these channels to make the pieces and then they have to be cut out and assembled and all that. That's what the, yeah, the injection molding is for the, where you squirt in the hot, hot, hot plastic. Uh, okay, so we have these and now we need the bases. Ooh, batteries. Ha, huh, and they're not inside already, which is awesome because that's how you get battery acid leaks in your toys. Now, so what are some of the other issues with toys coming out for big properties that have to be made so, or planned at least so far in advance? Oh, and I missed, I missed the question. Uh, Zardoz, I have not ordered my Bandai Space Marines. Uh, 100 bucks a pop I'm I'm just I'm just not into it just not into it unfortunately now the McFarlane toys for $20 a piece those I'm looking at with a little bit more of a serious eye especially the unpainted one where I can do it do it myself there it is yes eventually there is there is a toy that breaks the mold and god forbid somebody at the factory like drops a mold Ugh, awful Awful, awful, awful. Um, okay, so we have these things. Now I need the heads. All right, what was I saying? Yes, planning out so long, so far in advance. Now, as we know, for anybody who's involved in media stuff, video games, movies, TV shows, uh, a lot of things aren't finalized until the last minute. And we know this from, from TV shows. We know this from movies. Ooh, interesting. So these head pieces, so we have three heads in each one, and they're it's on the side. So it's not on the bottom, it's on the side. So they just slot into these. Hopefully, hopefully, well, does the black bar go in the front or the back? It looks like it goes in the front. Let's test one and see how that works. Is that right? These instructions are not great. It says, Todd's tip here is stack the zombie head aquariums freely to create a customized look. Okay. Well, that's something. So you can kind of do it how you want. But essentially, it's going to look like that, which is pretty neat. I like it. Uh, those molds probably cost more than the factory. Oh, a hundred percent, yes. Yeah, and that and Mew Couch exactly. Uh, if a movie or show isn't successful, the the toy line, yeah. So toy companies are they're very hesitant to dump a ton of money into toy production uh, unless it's like a they're really really sure that that it's going to do well. <laughs> the prettiest heads. Yeah, actually, I should look at, see what I've got. Ooh, interesting. So we have got some different, got men, we've got women, various hairstyles. Oh, this one only has one head. This one only has two. So they give you a nice variety. Not all just different versions of the same sculpt, which again is something we always we always look for. 
Um, where was I in my rambles? Oh, so also because they're stacked, we don't get tops for each one. Only we'll only have a couple of tops. That's good to know. Which actually. Hmm. Actually, hmm. kind of need to like plan out what I want to do with these heads. Can't just can't just put them in all willy nilly. <laughs> I was actually Pandar. I was actually just thinking, oh, I should get the box and, <laughs> and see what they did officially. But no, I will. I will just put them in. You know what? I am gonna do it willy nilly. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be crazy. Although I do want to know how many I'm going to end up with. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's an interesting number. Okay. So sometimes, yes, we'll get spoilers and toys. And this happens especially for big properties where, like, they ramp up these, again, they ramp up toy production so early and they're coming out with stuff and it's like, well, you're, you're going to see stuff. This happens a lot with Star Wars. Now, oftentimes it's minor spoilers because uh, for any main character in Star Wars, there are going to be multiple toys made over the, the lifetime of the, the fandom. So for instance, we can talk about, let's, let's talk about Force Awakens. So for a movie like that, again, they're going to plan toys to come out at or before the release of the movie. And then they're going to have more toys later, obviously. So what do we get for that movie? Well, we get, early on, we get a, what became known as Scavenger Ray, right? Ray and her... Jakku duds, sometimes with a mask over her face that is not removable on some toys, which is interesting. Uh, likenesses is a whole other conversation. Savage Punch, don't uh, don't tear that bandaid off. We have to we have to believe. So we get Scavenger Ray, and then we get things again very early on, like Ray with. <gasps> Luke's lightsaber. Well, I mean, depending on how you look at it, that can be a spoiler, right? Or we'll get a figure of Finn with a lightsaber. What? Finn's a Jedi? Well, I mean, hold on. It's <laughs> it's a little bit more complicated than that. So oftentimes there'll be very minor spoilers in accessories. And again, it's usually like, well, I don't know why that character has that. I'm going to have to see the movie to find out. So those aren't crazy spoilers. But what's really funny, again, specifically talking about uh, Force Awakens. Any any hardcore Force Awakens fans here who were into the toys when the movie was about to come out? So in the first wave of figures that came out, I think it came out right before the movie did. There was Rey, there was Finn, there was Poe, figures you'd expect. And right alongside them, anybody know? Was this fella, Constable Zuvio. Again, this was one of the first action figures for Force Awakens. Now, I'm sure that many of you are saying, who's Constable Zuvio? <laughs> I, to this day, continue to ask, who is Constable Zuvio? So this is one of these examples of, well, at some point in the production of that movie, this character had a scene, <laughs> a line, who knows, a name in the movie, who knows? <laughs> oh, Ruiner, you have one of these? <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad figure. It's just um, clearly the plans for this character went uh, awry, <laughs> you might say. And again, looking back on it like as, as just a little piece of toy history, 
you know, they, they spent a lot of money to produce this figure. And uh, again, if you were toy collecting, you'll be familiar with this character because a lot of these toys sat on shelves for a very long time. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. I love Constable Zuvia. I don't have a I don't have a figure of him, but uh, but whoever he is, he's great. <laughs> so yeah, things things like that sometimes happen. Uh, also, what was the other one? Again, you'll see you'll see minor changes in toys versus how the things came out in the final product, especially when it comes to CG elements, right? They'll change how things look. They'll tinker. They'll change the color of something. Oh, Robin, I, oh for sure. I, I need one in my collection. Oh, actually, I wonder if somebody out there has just like a ton of Constable Zuvio figures. Yeah, exactly, Terrence Pryor. Whatever, whatever his original, whatever the original intent was for for the good constable, uh, didn't quite make it into the. Oh, thank you so much for the subscription, resubscription, in four months. Well, and then and meal couch. That's that's true, but the difference is. <laughs> Eventually, the original trilogy got action figures of every single character in every single frame. But in Zuvio's case, again, this was like a... Uh, like, here's our original launch. These are the figures that are... These are the characters, rather, that are most important. And, uh, and he was there. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I really don't know how. What's like the best way to build this? One, two. I don't know. I'm for some reason I'm having not. Uh, I just kind of don't care. I just kind of want to get these things put together and move on. These also. Don't match up very well. Oh, I see what I did. Oh, wait, wait. What if I do it this way? If I do it like this. Aha. Nope. <laughs> like that. That could look cool. That would also fit better with these pieces. All right, I think I have a plan for my for my heads. Oh yeah, so the the Boba Fett with launching backpack that is a, a definitely a piece of toy history and a lot of misinformation. Yeah, there are whole websites devoted to to uh, rocket launching Boba Fett. Okay, well. That works. I mean, it's... They give you nine, not ten, so you can never have it with... Somehow it's going to be of, of an odd thing. So I'll live like this. Like, he's getting ready to put that that last one in there. Good enough. Also for Force Awakens... Not to, not to pick on their marketing for that movie, but um, the Kylo Ren's shuttle that he uses in that movie. There was one a famous, like the one of the first versions of that that came out again, like at release. Uh, it was white when in the movie it is black. Uh and nobody can really tell. Like at some point in the production, was it was it white to look like the uh, shuttle Tadirium from the old movies? Probably, who knows? But um, yes, yeah, so that one is like, oh, that's that's not what it looked like in the final version. All right, so here we have Governor's 
daughter, right? I forget, was it a daughter or niece? I know, I really don't care about Walking Dead. The color is imperial gray. I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah, so toy toy stuff can get can get pretty goofy. Thankfully, I mean it's sort of a it's a good and bad thing. I mean, it's partly good that not everybody pays attention to <laughs> to toys. So toys can still get away with things like you know, revealing some things and spoilers and so we can have toys at launch whereas you know, if everybody was paying attention to it, they'd have to be even more careful with it. Now, all right, so going back to the toy production process. So how is a toy made? Uh -huh. All right, so here we have the girl herself. And that that bag is a solid piece. There's no head underneath it. So that's fun. Oh, now we need to build the all-important lamp and side table good so obviously what do you need first you need the idea for the toy if it's a licensed product that means endless uh, iterations and signing off with the company but you figure out exactly what you want, then you hire a sculptor to make it. And again, that could be a physical sculpt. It could be a digital sculpt. These days, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, if it's a digital sculpt, it just needs to be printed out. How does this thing work? Once you have the sculpt, the prototype sculpt, then you need it painted. And again, at every single step I'm talking about, there are approvals that go back and forth between the toy company and the 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 owner of the property itself. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the, yeah, so these are McFarlane toys. Uh, I don't, what are they? Do they have a name for this? Actually, I don't think they make these anymore anyway. So these are McFarlane toys. They're just called building sets. They don't even have their own name. So like I said, these are partway between Lego and Best Lock. So thankfully not nearly as frustrating as Best Lock, but of course not quite as good as, as Lego. The fit is the fit so far is, is okay. So they have the sculpt. They approve the sculpt. They get somebody to paint it. They approve the painting. Oh, we have a little... It's a weird looking table, but okay. Whatever. Um, like I said, they approve the painting of it. And then they're off to production. So then they get... They send it to China. To a factory. And there are lots of toy factories in China. And then they get to work on it. Now the China process is really, really interesting. And uh, in a lot of ways, still not super great. Things you might have heard about people be hardly being paid is true. Things like child labor in some of these places is true. I've never been to China. I've never been to a toy factory. I would be, I would absolutely be interested in going one day in the future. I know several people, I, I know a bunch of people in the toy world who have gone and their stories would shock you <laughs> about the stuff that goes on in the factories in China. Uh, from working conditions to how the 
factories deal with stuff. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I spent one Toy Fair party with a guy, and he was, uh, he was inebriated, we'll put it that way. And he was just telling us just the craziest stories about things that he had seen. Because what happens is, especially for big toys, you know, like not even not even at the level of Star Wars, but you know, if a if a toy company has put out money to get a license and they have to make sure things are really, you know, spot on, they'll actually send a representative from a U.S. office or wherever they're based. They'll send that representative to China to the factory to oversee what's going on there. Because otherwise, what you do is you have to wait, right? You send the prototype to China. Uh, they do a they do a sample a sample sculpt. They do a sample paint, and then they go over and over and over again. And they'll send you pictures, which are fine, but you really have to see these things in person to see what they're going to look like. And that, of course, takes time and expense to send them overseas back and forth. So, like I said, for the big stuff, they'll actually put somebody on an airplane, send them to China to take a look, and then they'll say, "Oh, well, that that's." That's okay. That's no good. Uh, that needs to be fixed. So we have just a pile of wood and a base. And we get started. This is one of the things that was people were complaining about these sets. It's like, if everything is going to be covered up, why, do, why am I even doing this? <laughs> you could have just given me a base that was covered. I guess this is the fun part. You might... I don't know. Somebody might say that. But yeah, so they go back and forth, back and forth over the process of looking at the prototypes until they're all agreed upon. Yes, yes, this is how we want it to go. And then it becomes mass produced. Which, again, depending on the factory, means running the plastic through these molds, popping them out, and it goes into a long line of people who, who paint and assemble them as they go. For the experience of, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm definitely getting the experience here. So how does one get ethically sourced toys? Oh, Pandar, that's, that's a question. That is definitely a question. Um... Typically, something like that, yeah, exactly. Uh, you have to make them yourself. Small batches of toys made in, in, I, honestly, oftentimes in people's houses or some sort of small studios, things like that. Uh, by by necessity, we're talking small batch things, essentially handmade. But yeah, the um, the system for producing toys in China is uh, is an exploitative one for sure, and has a lot of issues. And it's not all it's not all like Americans, you know, demanding oh everything has to be cheap and do it this way and do it that way. It's it's a lot of that, but for as I've heard just as many stories of about how when you're dealing with factories in China that the factories have all the power and will screw over companies wherever they can, uh, and you have to. And that's another reason why, again, the bigger toy companies will actually send people out there to oversee production. And that, oh, one one of my one of my toy contacts would explain it as as a. Uh, Toy factories have no loyalty and no memory. Every time you go, every time you approach one with a pro with a potential project, it's like it's like meeting them for the very first time. You could have made a, th a thousand different toys with a with a factory, and then for, with the thousand and one, the thousand and first toy, they're like, "Oh, who are you? Okay, yeah, here's our here's our uh, <laughs> here are our numbers." take it or leave it. And you're like, no, no, but I, I've worked with you before. And they're like, no, no, I, we don't know who you are. We're starting from scratch. If you want to, if you want to make a toy here, this is how much it's going to cost. 
don't outsource your production in China. But again, that's the problem though. It is it's so much cheaper and and they're set up to do all of these things, right? Ooh, that's kind of the And yeah, I'm I'm certainly not saying that that how they do it in China is is the best or the way it should be, but it just sort of it literally it is what it is. And if you own just about any kind of toy, unless unless we're talking about again like the really small run or like the vinyl toys where essentially people are making them in their own garages and basements. Everything is pretty much made this way. Yeah, that's how that is also how we're able to afford things. Because yeah, those those vinyl things that people make in their houses, those tend to be much more expensive, much more limited, hard to get your hands on them. You're not gonna find a lot of really cool brands and things like that. Okay, what do we have here? But, you know, that's not to say that it's always going to be like that. There are definitely companies out there who are looking at ways of of making things through better processes. Using more recycled materials, things like that. So that's all. It's all hopeful for the for the future. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. It's interesting. So there are certain places where you have to have specific parts go in. Otherwise, you can just sort of do whatever you want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the brick counts for just a million of these things. Oh, actually, I wasn't supposed to do that. Good to know. Oh, there's a door, I think, that goes there. All right. Let's see. So we have two rows. Three, four, five. So it's going to be the sixth row that has something else going on. Three, four, five. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now the rest I just have to stick it in. Um, yeah, Fadier. So quality control is a whole other can of worms when it comes to toys. A lot of toys come out crappy, even with, you know, people going to the factories to check them out. Um, lots of issues there. Oh, and the other thing, the other really great thing is that security in factories is essentially non-existent. And one, in many ways, so things just get tossed out, prototypes, So we have the first six rows. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, what? <laughs> oh man. They need like guides on here to make it so you don't have to like count each single thing. Uh, yeah, Fadir, yeah, the, the, the factories are out to make as much money as they possibly can. So sometimes, right, they'll change up the materials that are used, and you'll find out later, oh, that piece wasn't actually run in the plastic that I ordered. Uh, chicken Barf, this is Walking Dead Governor's room we're building. Uh, right now, unfortunately, we're just in a giant batch of flooring 
which is super fun, let me tell you. But it goes quickly. Then there are things called factory seconds. What's factory seconds? Well, sometimes. Sometimes factories will make a toy, an action figure all day long. Then their shift will end. And then they'll make more. Outside of normal business hours. And then they'll just sell them out the back to whoever wants them. <laughs> sometimes in different colors. Sometimes in different packages. Uh, who knows? <laughs> sometimes in different materials. So sometimes you'll find like these crazy one-of-a-kind versions of... You're like, wait, that toy never came in silver with you know, that other character's blaster. And it's like, oh, well, you know, we got out of the back of the factory. And it's, and uh, sometimes like they're, it's the same quality as the real thing, but it's, you know, it's different. It could be one of a kind. Yeah, I don't know. We have to build up the walls after, oh my God, so much. I don't know. Yeah, there are a lot of floor pieces here. Okay, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, twelve. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. 11 and 12. All right, I just want to make sure I get the, the specific pieces in the right way. All right, cool. So yeah, there are lots and lots of shenanigans that go on in Chinese toy factories. And I mean, probably every kind of toy factory, to be honest, or every kind of factory rather, period. Oh, I don't know. You know, once you... Each one of these re does require a whole bunch of these parts. And then, of course, beyond all of that, you make the toy. You go through the whole process. You have approvals. You have a factory that you trust. Or that you get, <laughs> uh, or that you, you know, somebody recommended to you. You go through all the steps, get your toys made. Then you have to get them to whatever other country you're in, which is a whole different issue. You have to hire entire other companies to get your toys out of China to ship them. You have to go through customs. You have to decide if you are paying for your own uh, shipping container on a boat or if you're sharing it with others, which drastically changes how customs work on the other end. And yet that's, oh my God, the stories that I've been told about that is just completely nightmarish. Also bribes, yep, a hundred percent, yes. So, like I, I said, a, a very good friend of mine has been in the, has been producing toys for decades, and he has all of these really interesting spreadsheets for every step of everything I'm talking about. And yeah, when it gets to the factory stuff, there's always a line item for bribes. It's just part of the part of the the system. And you know that's always good when. <laughs> When that's when that's an integral part of your uh, business. Okay, check that out. Look, we have a floor. Now there are extra pieces here that I don't know if we're going to use. I suppose if you were really crazy, you could have organized all of these and then figured out how you wanted the wood grain to look. I, I don't know why you would why you would do that. Uh, Chicken Barf says, I had a friend that was a welder in a GT bicycle factory. Yeah. Oh, and that and and that's uh, another thing too, right? So 
a, a toy costs pennies in plastic, right? Just nothing. Um, and then the 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 price of the figure then is made up of all these other things that are just kind of nebulous. You know, the the toy company needs to you know has to pay the licensor and obviously to make the molds they have to get back the money for the molds but yeah the the final price of things are nothing to do with how much it actually costs to make these things in a lot of cases all right so now we're going to build up the wall behind they give you these little tiny pieces to offset so that they're going to they'll overlap instead of so where does that other one go? Oh, I see. It's going to overlap the end. Because we know that overlapping parts make things more sturdy in the end. We like that. Yeah, so toy, toy stuff is interesting. It can be really fun. It can be really frustrating. I have not produced a toy... I've thought about it. Again, I, I definitely know enough people in the industry that I can I could make it happen. I just would have to come up with a, a really good idea. Actually, I, I had an idea that I thought was great. A great idea for a toy line. But the guy I talked to was like, eh, no thanks. <laughs> I don't know how many, yeah, I'll, and actually now I don't know how successful it will be these days anyway. This was a, a couple, a few years ago. A, <laughs> a Norse Wheat bobblehead. I, I don't know if we need that. It would be, that would be silly. But, um, so cable news, right? Cable news is really popular. Lots of people watch it. There are lots of personalities on cable news. So when we were first getting into the big heyday of, the Funko and Super 7 and other companies making all these retro style action figures, you know, really simple five points of articulation, three and three quarters. A building that turns into a robot. I thought it would be funny if you did a line of essentially cable news personalities and then just did them as like men men in suits like just they just look totally normal but they come with really crazy accessories so you would get like a Anderson Cooper with you know a bazooka and a machete or something and then you know it could be like the the action news force squad or something you know something like really silly like that i thought it could be fun and then you know, do some do somebody from Fox News, do somebody from CNN. But yeah, my buddy was like, "Eh, <laughs> okay." Let's see. Don't quit my day job, right? Now, did I do something wrong? I guess it doesn't really matter. There's these little single pieces. They they're smooth on one side, so it's gonna be. In some way, it's going to be backwards. Oh, well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wrestling figure, keep on news. <laughs> I mean, I suppose. Oh, I see. Like I said, that, that, was, that was one idea I had, but I did not do anything with it. It's also interesting talking to, again, like hardcore t people who have been in the toy business forever, like that buddy of mine, because, you know, you've, you have an idea like that and you say, hey, so, you know, I'm thinking about making, thinking about making toys, you know, maybe a wave of three figures. Each one has one accessory. They're three and three, three and three quarter inches tall. You know, I want to make a thousand each of them. And my buddy... Like you can see the numbers clicking in his head and he'll just, he'll spit out 
a price and it'll be like, this is how much it costs to make that. Because it's so, like all, all of the stuff I've been talking about, it's so ingrained and it's, and it's such a process that they go through again and again and again. They're like, they just, they just know it almost right off the top of their heads. It's pretty crazy. All right, so by the time I'm done here, I need one, two, three, four layers. Okay, I have three, so one more. So if anybody ever does need toys made, um, I can help get you in touch with the right people. And so, and a lot of people sometimes will, or a lot of people, some people will ask, well, how does 3D printing factor into all of this? And for now, not that much. Like I said at the beginning, when, you, when you're making that initial sculpt, some artists will will do it in a 3D, will sculpt it in a 3D program, and then they'll print out that initial prototype. But past that, toy producing is still pretty, pretty traditional. They're not mass printing toys yet and releasing them that way. As materials get stronger I I mean I guess they might as we're seeing we're seeing new things like Hero Forge printing miniatures in color maybe that could go further toward 3D printing being a, a part of the toy production side but it's just not really it's just not really happening yet but you hear that right that 3D 3D printing is really good for prototyping because you can very quickly spit out a test and they're like, oh, well, that, that toy looks really cool. But, you know, what if his armor was slightly different? And then your artist can say, oh, hold on one second. Go into the computer, move a couple things around, hit print. And then a few hours later, you have a new, a new prototype to look at in person. Um, back in the old, the quote unquote old days, just more than a few months ago, when I would visit D.C., DC's office here in Burbank and the DC collectibles wing, they have, they had a, a line of, um, yeah, of 3d printers there. So they could literally do this right there in, in the office. Uh, yeah. Fadier. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Prototyping has definitely benefited from, from 3d printing, but not so much the production side. Panda, you you were one of those um, those peop those people who were very early getting into alternative alternative production methods and alternative uh, materials. I don't know the name of it. So at at Toy Fair this year, which again was kind of like the last big convention, who knows, maybe ever. So in February went to Toy Fair and there was a company there that makes stuffed animals and their gimmick was that the stuffed animal was completely made from recycled water bottles which I thought was pretty cool and they felt just like any other soft cute stuffed animal they didn't have any weird smell or anything to them so I thought that was interesting and of course, then, you know, you get into questions of, well, you know, how much, how much energy does it cost to make these things? And, you know, those are, those are questions for smarter people than I. Okay. Now we're getting into the doorway. I guess I'm almost done with this thing. That's exciting. Uh oh, did I do something wrong? What happened there? Huh. 
Okay, long, short, long, short, long. So how did it end up? Short, long, short, long, short. I don't, somehow I confuse myself here. This way. Oh, there we go. Now I figured it out. Oh man, that was, <laughs> that broke my brain there for a second. There we go. That way. Whew. Okay, back on track. Let's get this door in. Yeah, no, that's true, Arsenal Roy. There's um, the way you can take 3D prints and then, or 3D sculpts rather, and then alter them and make new versions of things. Okay, how does. Does the door swing out or in? Okay, cool. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they actually took some of the older handmade sculpts and essentially scanned them in and then made digital sculpts based on the older ones and then were able to alter them and and make new versions. That was that was an interesting thing I read about. Yeah, and parts and accessories and replacement pieces. Man, how cool would that be? Say you bought you had like a really expensive toy like a hot toys or something and you know down the line a piece broke and you could just get in touch with the company and they could just send you the file to print out that one piece to to you know to do your own replacement that would be neat okay my my parts piles over here are definitely getting smaller Means almost done. Good. There we go. Oh, I, I would imagine there are people out there making G.I. Joe parts, at least. I mean, I kind of assume that there's 3D parts for everything. I haven't done a lot of checking. Like I said, we, we own a 3D printer, but it's not set up yet. So we have... Ooh, that's pretty cool. Door opens. Do, 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 do. All right, got just a couple more, couple more layers. We're almost there. Yeah, I mean, some of the some companies are actually good about giving you replacement parts for things, but the idea that you could that you could actually printed in your own home or that you know they'd send you the official part that would be that'd be cool yeah Knox is 3d printing yep yeah I, I, once I get mine up and running I gotta talk to him get some of those sweet sweet files I have been looking online there's a lot of stuff you can get for free which is very cool Thingiverse and what is it cults 3D is another website. But yeah, there's a lot of neat stuff out there. Just printed a Blood Bowl team. Yeah. Yeah, I've downloaded some 
STLs, things that I want to print once I get the, the darn thing up and running. Okay. I think there's just one more, one more layer here. Very, very close. Uh, we ended up getting the Elegu Mars. So, uh, re resin printer, so it prints things in really fine quality. It's not a very, it's a pretty small printer though, so we can't print big pieces. Uh, but again, printing mainly miniatures and things for molding for my wife's soap company, so we didn't need to go huge. Uh, bought it when it was on sale on Amazon, even though we weren't ready to set it up quite yet, but we figured, hey, we'll have it. A little bit cheaper price, we'll be good to go. So hopefully one day soon, we'll be able to start cranking out prints on that and show off that stuff. Okay. Almost done here. Yeah, I had gone to a convention late last year. I couldn't tell you which one it was, but um, there was a guy there. Oh, it might have been Frozen. Looks cool. Yeah, that was that was on the list too. Uh, it might have been Designer Con. Oh, that's these go on top of here. Sure. I think it was Designer Con. Anyway, there was a dude there who was selling things that he had three D printed and. I talked to him for quite a while, and he had had an Elegoo Mars actually, and he was told me about some some tips, some tricks, some websites to get files. So that was neat. It's funny he was way more interested in just like talking about how he made stuff than even trying to sell me on anything that he had there that day. So that was nice. He genuinely just wanted more people in the community. But yeah, I hear really good things about, about the Frozen, about the... So the one I have, the Elegoo Mars, it's essentially the same thing as the Any Any Cubic Photon, which is really popular. And if you want something bigger, there is a new... There is a Elegoo Saturn now that's bigger than the one I have. Now, I don't have a screwdriver handy, so I'm not going to turn on the lights right now. So you'll just have to imagine. Sorry. I'll get that set up and take a picture later. All right, we have that. We have this. We have a little bookcase stand that goes there. We have another one that goes there. All right, check it out. So there's the room. Look, it's cute. That's not too bad. We've got an outside, door opens. You could stick things out here if you wanted, people, whatever. Uh, right, yeah, Saturn is up for, um, I think, pre-order. And then, of course, you can add in your sad, sad. Oh, let's put him this way so you can see his wall of heads. Govna, creepy girl. And then, of course, her bloody, gory bucket. All right. Success. And it did give us a handful of extra pieces, which, again, we could swap out. If we had another set, we could attach it and use some of these... Probably, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Ooh, I should combine this with one of my kids' Lego sets. So, like, they can leave their house and then go into, <laughs> into here. Two months. Oh, thank you so much. All righty. Well, that was fun. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little build and talk about the toy industry it's, it's an interesting subject for sure 
Uh, if anyone has ever has any questions, let me know. I can answer specific things or go over anything anyone would like. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll put up some pictures of this with the lights on and everything else. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow with Warhammer Wednesday. Probably build some more cool chaos dudes out of the Shadow Spear box. Um, I, I really like the models in that one. Otherwise, have a great day, everybody. Oh, good, Robin Wombat. <laughs> All right, well, to Robin Wombat and everybody else, thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking toys, and I'll see everybody later. Bye-bye, everybody.